Hey everyone. Hey Facebook. What's up? It's Jody here on my 11 a.m. live every Monday morning. I'm on time today. So good day. Uh, yeah, busy, busy day. How are all of you? Um, I hope that I picked this topic that is perfect for what you want to hear today because I think a lot of us need to hear it. You know, I was, I've been recording my audiobook the uh, the teen, the book for teens the anxiety book for teens and so I've been recording it and I got to this section today about to do lists and I feel like a lot of teens people are extremes right so some teens are like obsessed with getting everything done and then some don't it kind of there's a resistance or rejection uh, to having to do stuff <laughs> and um, so I was talking about it and really encouraging them to make to do lists for themselves. But I realized that a lot of us have this ongoing to-do list. Maybe we don't write it down, but with this ongoing list in our head of all these things. And we are so busy. And then we feel like we don't have time for the things that we really want to do. And so I want to introduce you to this idea that I learned about when I read Good to Great by Jim Collins. So it's a business book, Good to Great, but it really talks about how to be a good leader. And so it can help in every area of your life, even if you're just like leading your household. Uh, I feel like this is a really good, the, the, the lessons in this book, which are really developed through solid research, like real good research, really helps you be a good person, be a good leader, you know, make an impact on the world. So I, I would encourage anyone to read uh, Jim Collins' books, actually. It really changed my life. But this idea was introduced by this book that the, the stop doing list, if you make a stop doing list, it's actually more important than your to-do list. Because, uh, because we really spend a lot of time and a lot of energy doing things that don't necessarily serve us, they don't impact anybody, they don't impact the things we want, they don't even connect with what's important to us, but we spend a lot of our time, up to sometimes people estimate up to 80% of the time doing things that don't make impact. So only 20% of the time, we actually do things that are what we want, what impacts the people around us, what's good for us, what lifts us up, what brings money in, brings opportunities, whatever it is. And the other 80% of the time, we're doing things that, maybe we're just doing unconscious things or we're doing things that are satisfying somebody else's agenda, whatever it is, we need to scale that down. Even if we can't totally eliminate that altogether, we really have to take down all the things that we do that's not helping anybody, least of all you, and really taking up a lot of your time and energy, which frankly, like it's too valuable. It's just too valuable to give stuff that doesn't, to give to things that are not helping you, not helping anyone around you. So I'm gonna encourage you all to make a stop doing list. Does this sound fun actually? I put this on my list, I, I had a leadership goal uh, chart that I created for myself to, to make some real goals for myself in my leadership development and measurable. <laughs> and one of my goals was making a stop doing list. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about what that might look like so I could encourage you to do it because it's really eased my life in so many ways. It's really made a difference. Um, Unfortunately, I had some projects already started that do make an impact, but I can't wait till these are done. I'm gonna spread things out a little bit more instead of piling everything on at once. So my stop doing list like, is like once I finish some stuff and then there's other things that I do all the time that I just don't need to do. And so that I put them on here. Okay, this is a literal list. Like I really want you to write this down because there's something that happens when you write things down. You become a witness of yourself and it helps you sustain whatever commitments that you're making. All right, so like these are some of the examples you might put on your not doing list. If you have a place that you work, if you work at home or if you do some odd jobs or tasks at home and you change the place you work all the time, Right, so if you're changing the place you work all the time and then you have to reset up everything, and close it down and reset it up and close it down and reset it up and close it down, you see the inefficiency of that? 
So I'm not suggesting you have to do this. I'm just saying that this is an example of what you'd put on your not doing list. That means that you're gonna create a space that you always work at that you could leave set up so that you don't have to take all of the mental energy to reset up and close it down and reset up and close it down. That kind of thing would really give you a lot more time in your life. Another thing, unconscious scrolling. So a lot of times we say, okay, this is our time that we wanna connect on social media. If we're really conscious about it, it's a totally different experience than when we're unconscious. First of all, how long we do it. Second of all, how much we get out of it. And third of all, like how we see ourselves as I kind of doing that. Because if you're unconscious about it, to be sure you're gonna have some guilt over it and you're not gonna enjoy it. So making that kind of, so the stop doing this is unconsciously scrolling. And actually it's really unconsciously doing a lot of things or anything unconscious. If you're doing anything unconscious, you're not thinking about what's important to you when you're making those choices. When you do things consciously, you're making choices about what's important to you. When you're doing it unconsciously, you are powerless. Like you don't, or you aren't making those choices and so not coming up with the, the activities that serve your highest good. A lot of time is wasted that way. So this is a really important thing on your stop doing list. Stop doing things unconsciously. <laughs> and always do things consciously where you have the power to do the things that are important, uh, are valuable, have a lot of impact, uh, create opportunities, create money, whatever it is, get things done or be. Even if you consciously decide to relax, when you're consciously deciding to relax, I promise you get a lot more out of it. A lot more out of it. Okay, so another thing is like stop redoing things. A lot of times, you know that saying that says measure twice, cut once, right? So if you plan a little bit, uh, you think about it a little bit longer, then you can make one cut because you got it right. So you measure twice. Like you're gonna cut a piece of wood and you need to know the length of it. And then you measure it once and you cut it and you made a mistake. So this is means like measure twice, make sure you got the exact right length and then cut it once because it saves you from having to go to the store and get a whole other piece of wood. This is a lot of our time and energy goes in. Sometimes it's a mistake and an accident and stuff and we have to deal with that. Yes, there's some that stuff happens. You sent the paperwork in, but they didn't receive it. You have to send it in again. Some of that stuff's out of your control and you can handle it. We're talking about minimizing the things that are in your control. You know, try to create a consciousness and a pause when you're doing something so that you, so that you can minimize the times you have to redo it because of whatever. Mistakes happen, but we can minimize them a little bit. This is something, this is something that I have on my to-do list. <laughs> Measure twice, Jody. Um, so I don't make mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. You know, I like create something and then I, I fix it and then the link's the same as the first one and so the link's broken for people and those kind of things. So I'm redoing some stuff and I need to, that's a huge thing on my to-do list to measure twice, to be a little more thoughtful about it, to bring that Saturn in when I'm really being conscious about what I'm doing. You know how people have that Saturn, like overthinking, overthinking everything? Like I need to bring that on sometimes <laughs> when I'm too much in my Mars. All right, so um, w w a couple more tips here and you could ask me any questions if this, tell me if this is landing, tell me if you're liking what you hear telling if you're like, I need this today, say it, tell me. Okay, so we wanna consciously, so quitting. A lot of people get really worried about quitting things. And if you're just consciously deciding to stop doing something that doesn't really make sense, it's not quitting, right? That's successful. You're not failing at something because you're taking it off your to-do list because it's not a right thing for you, it's not a right thing for the situation, it has no, it makes no sense anymore. It might have made sense in the past, but it doesn't anymore. If you take it off your list, um, if you take it off your list, then um, Spidey Parker, is that Peter Parker? Um, so if you take it off your list, it's not quitting. 
Don't think about it as quitting. Think about it as success because this will increase your success to take that thing off your list. It's smart. It's successful. It's great of you to take it off your list. It doesn't mean that you couldn't and you are too weak or it's smart. Start thinking of yourself as smart when you take things off your list that you don't want anymore. All right. When you're conscious about what you do and when you're conscious about what you stop doing, then it, defi it divides up, like it delineates what's important to you to what's not important to you. And this is a really important thing to delineate for yourself. You want to be clear on what's important to you. And I know that things that are important to you, yes, it's of course it's things that are important to people that you love and around you and that kind of thing and for the highest good. And then there's a lot of things that aren't important to you. And that means that they're kind of probably not too important to anybody, right? It's not like you're not going to put things on. It's not important to you. And it's like really important to someone that you love. It's just, that's not how we work. So don't ever worry about that. I think people worry about that and that's, but that's not what I'm talking about. If things that are important to someone you love, they are on your important list. I know it. Okay. So I have a couple more thoughts here. I jotted down to make sure I said, um, email, right? Your email inbox. It's a lot of other people's agendas in there, isn't it? Maybe you want to put on your not doing list uh, that you don't want to check your email all day or you want to turn off your notifications on your email. You don't need notifications. There's a lot of junk in there. <laughs> so you don't need those to come up on your phone all the time. You could, you could program it so it's only the people that you want to know about or you could just decide to check it like twice a day and clear it out. Okay. Uh, this also could mean contracting with other people about jobs that aren't that you hate. So if you're doing jobs all the time, even if they're chores around the house that you really hate to do, sometimes you have to get over it and do it. It's easier. And sometimes there's those things that you could contract somebody else to do for you. And it really makes sense because it frees you up to doing something that could earn you more money or could make you feel much better or like it's a good exchange, right? You could earn like a lot of money in this hour and only be paying a contractor this much for the same amount of time. Those are really important things to be really clear about and know that if you, if that, that if you give somebody else the job to do, even if you have to pay them, it could open you up to perhaps earning more than you paid them for. And so it's totally worth it. You have to question those things because a lot of times we don't. We just think like, oh, only snobs, get, you know, hire somebody else to do such and such or have food delivered or whatever it is. Um, think about the time that it opens up to have somebody else do that thing, especially if it's something that you don't feel good at. Uh, it, it's very inefficient for you to do because it takes longer for you. You hate it. You just don't like it. It, it zaps all your energy for other things and later on see if you could contract that stuff out and and actively use that time to make up for it multifold it it, it can have it can it's with some things it can happen and I, you know think about a return on the investment of your time anything that you choose your time for remember when you say to yourself all the time there's not enough time i don't have enough time those all become excuses and become like crutches for you to not have to do something. I always repeat to myself, there is more than enough time for everything that I wanna do. There's more than enough time for everything that I want to do. This makes me feel empowered that I have control over my time instead of like the schedule or other people's agendas controlling my time. You know how you feel like that some days? You're like, I have no control over my time. Everybody's calling me, wanting me, blah, 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 blah. You control that actually. And once you see that you control that, so if people are texting you all the time, you can be away from your phone if you want to set that limit. You don't ask people, watch my setting limits video because you don't ask people, please respect between two and five I'm doing this work. They don't care. They're gonna text you and they're gonna figure that you'll look at it later. But you're, if you have that phone available and you see it right now, you'll be mad that they didn't respect your limit. Turn the phone off, put it away, turn the ringer off, go somewhere. Like you have full control over that. And think about, I want to schedule my time with a return on my investment. I even, I do watch TV. 
I do. I watch videos, I watch TV, I read fiction. I do a lot of things that fill me up. I walk outside, I sit outside. I sit in the sun, I sit, you know, I mean, I do have relaxation time, but it's scheduled in. It's conscious relaxation time, so I get to reap the benefits of it. I know a lot of people who like zone out because they just can't and then they don't get fed by it. They feel really guilty about it, right? They berating themselves about it. It's not, it doesn't help them. Uh, same amount of time, totally different body and mind response to that. So yeah, so even consciously relaxing, you'll get more return on that investment. So I know I went on and on and on. I hope it's absolutely serves you and um, it's what you wanted to hear today. But so pass it along. Please pass along this video because I think a lot of people need to know this information. So comment, like, pass, share, all of that. And I'll see you next week right here at 11 a.m. on Monday.